So this is part of our uh, desktop security series. We've been doing uh, short presentations uh, at the beginning of Plug for the, for, for the last year. And tonight I'm going to talk about address tags. Um, this is a way of getting unique email addresses for privacy and security. Um, this is actually a kind of an add-on to the privacy and security talk that I've given a couple times, uh, in, uh, including recently at Gangplank, um, and uh, uh, talking about um, using password manager. One of the things that you can do with the password manager is track a lot of different data, including unique uh, email addresses. Um, but we still need to talk about why we use e unique email addresses and what it is I'm talking about uh, when I, I, I mention address tags. Okay, so uh, the first thing is this email isn't just email anymore. Um, many sites use email addresses as usernames. So you log in as example at example.com, um, which would be interesting if that works. Um, but there are also places that are using it for sending you reminders, which we might not consider really as email. They're just a way of sending us a message. You know, ten years ago they would they, they would have to send us an SMS or something like that. Um, now they're they, nowadays they're doing it with email, um, and in many cases it's just clogging up our inbox. It's not really something that I need coming in. Just something I might need a record of or something like that. Uh, so receipts. Uh, you know, sh shipping details when you're, if you're purchasing something, the whatever the, of the day that you've accidentally signed up for, even though you told them not to add you to your, through their mailing list, um, and of course alerts about whatever it is that they're wanting to send you alerts on, um, uh, which in the recent not email but uh, SMS was the recent uh, uh, um, storms that we had, uh, everybody getting alerts at five o'clock in the morning that suddenly Phoenix was getting rain and we didn't know what to do about it. So, <laughs> all right. So the email as a username from the site perspective. Um, so there are several advantages. It's easy for the customer to remember. It's their email address. They should hopefully know what it is, right? Um, the site gets access to your email address. So from the site's perspective, this is good. They can email you now. Um, and they can also then verify that your email address works and that you are a person for creating an account. Uh, this is actually kind of a good thing for a lot of uh, pieces. We want them to verify that people are people and that it's not just a bunch of spam accounts uh, being used to uh, um, go after uh, people. Um, there are some disadvantages from the site account, though. You do, we do still have families that have shared email. Um, so I worked with a uh, company last job that was an online gaming company, and we ran into that where we had a lot of customers where one email address for everybody in the family. I don't know why. Some of it might have been just so the parents could control what the kids are seeing or so forth. Uh, some of them just probably just didn't understand that any email provider you, you use nowadays can give you multiple email addresses, and they weren't using it for whatever reason. Um, and then also customers might need multiple accounts. In our case, we didn't want them to have multiple accounts, um, but there are lots of places where we do. Um, and uh, so uh, if you're using the straight email address and multiple people are using it, or a single person is using it yet needs multiple accounts, that can lead to a problem if that is the unique user ID for logging in. Now, the email is username from your perspective. Advantage, it's easy to remember. Same thing that the, from the site perspective. Um, and uh, the site can verify your, your uh, address and account. This is actually a good thing because we want them to verify that we are we and not start just sign us up for a bunch of spam. Um, you know, Back in the day, 15 years ago, we didn't do email verification. Actually, some places still don't do that. And they, you can just sign up for something. So if you go to... Uh, you know, Fred's Fish House and sign up for the fish of the day. And if they don't verify email addresses, you can start signing up people that you don't like so that they get email about the fish of the day with, that they don't care about. Um, and that's spamming them, and it's also making it bad for Fred because it's going to make it difficult for him to deliver mail to the people who do want to know about the fish of the day because the, he's being marked as spam by the people who didn't actually sign up. Um, so overall, for those companies that are, or sites or whatever it is that are going to be sending email out to subscribers or customers or however that relationship is, de is described, we want them to verify email addresses. Um, now, disadvantages, the site gets access to your email address because it might not be a site that I want emailing me. If I'm just trying to look something up or if I need to create an account that doesn't actually need interaction, so for instance, if I'm buying an ebook, they don't really need my email address because I can pay for it. I can go download it. We're done, right? I don't need to, to get further involved with the company. Um, there are lots of accounts that I have, 
They're just like that. There's, they don't need any information about me. We've gone and done whatever we're going to do, and we're finished. We don't need to go on. And even if I go back, I can either just do a non-account purchase again, or I can use the same account. But again, they don't need to have... They don't need to know where I live. They don't need to know what my email address is. They don't need my phone number. They don't need my shoe size. Well, if I'm buying shoes, maybe they need my shoe size. But um, another disadvantage, though, is the site uh, can verify your email address and account. So this, is a, from our perspective, it's an advantage and a disadvantage. It's an advantage that they're verifying the email address, but for something that doesn't need the email address, they don't need to know that that, that actually gets to a real person. Um, so uh, I see that as a disadvantage for those places that don't need to be emailing me. Uh, again, if you've got a, f a shared email address, that becomes a, can become a disadvantage from your perspective. Um, and you might need m multiple accounts. Uh, so using a, a unique email or using an email address as an, a login ID has several disadvantages, especially from the user's perspective. Some of which can be taken care of with a, a, a tag some of which won't, because a tag is still giving them a valid email address. So the, the disadvantages of giving them a valid email address are still there. Um, the difference being that if you use a tag, you can easily filter them to spam if you didn't want to get further correspondence from the company. All right, so uniquity. The tags are what we can use to get unique email addresses using our current email address, whatever that address is. So similar to setting up a, a number for your house, right? If you live, if you get a house, you can just put a number after it, and that can become a unique number for everybody that's sending you mail. So now you can look at your, your mail, and, and even though you get things in plain envelopes that don't say anything about where it came from, you can tell where they got the address to begin with, or potentially tell where they got the address to begin with because of the unique number. Um, this theoretically works with apartments and other things that have need the number as part of the number, uh, but the, that starts to become a, a, an issue for physical mail. But for email, we've got several different options. Now let me explain the different parts of email real quick, just because we're going to have to talk about it a little bit. The email, if you look at the specifications, they're called local at domain. They actually use a little like slightly different word for domain, but that's going to work for us. So the domain is the domain. So if you've got a Gmail account, it's gmail.com is the domain. Uh, fredshouseoffish.com, fredshouseoffish.com is the domain. We're not doing anything to change that. That is whatever, whatever it is for your email address um, or email addresses because we have personal work and so forth. The local portion, that is who you are. So if you are Fred at fredshouseoffish.com, then Fred is the local portion of the address. If you are example at gmail.com, then your email address, your, your local portion is example. The tag goes at the end of the local part. In the case of Gmail, we're using a, a plus as, this, as the uh, token. So it would be example plus some tag at gmail.com. And whatever that tag is actually gets tossed off for delivery so that the, e the email still comes to me. And I'll have some examples in a second. The separator, though, is domain dependent because there's no point in making it the same everywhere so that people can understand it. That would just not make sense, not on the internet, right? Um, so the, this, the thing is, tag addressing came along at long after email. Actually, the domain portion came along long after email was started. So this, a lot of these things are kind of being back engineered onto an existing system. Um, and one of, the, one of the results of that is that the separator is different. So Gmail uses a plus. Other providers use a minus or something else. Um, so you need to figure out what it is that your provider or your email service uses for tag addressing if they support tag addressing. I'll cover a couple of different email providers that do that are fairly common. Um, but I don't have a list of everything. One, I don't know what everything is. But, um, but if you have questions, uh, if you search for your provider and uh, tag addressing, uh, address tags, you should be able to find out uh, if they do support it. All right. So, uh, so there are some issues with this. One is that some sites foolishly block the plus symbol in an email address. So if you have example plus PayPal at uh, gmail.com, PayPal actually allows it, but there are some other places that don't. Uh, t-shirt vendor, I bought a t-shirt from recently, uh, didn't. I let them know until they fixed their site. I'm not buying any more t-shirts from them. Uh, which is kind of a shame because they do like a t-shirt of the day. And I would actually probably buy a t-shirt every week from them. 
Um, so it's actually significantly impacting their uh, their their income. Um, although it's better for my life to not have you know, 50 T-shirts show up every year into my house. <laughs> um, uh, Google uh, uh, for your entity. So if you have Google for your school or Google for your work or whatever, Google for your domain type of things, the plus might not work. I believe basically the, the domain uh, administrator can turn that on and off. Um, I have found it to work sometimes for us. We're, we're using Google at work. Um, it, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And I haven't completely nailed down for certain when it always works. Um, because I only care, I, every three months I get all pissed off at 2 o'clock in the morning, try some things, and then forget about it in the morning. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, and this one specifically hits me, is that it doesn't work for addresses, or, le- or for aliases, at least not the way we're set up at work. Um, so I have one account, that one thing that is my user ID, but I also have an email alias, and I cannot use the email alias and tags. Uh, I've, that is for certain uh, through um, Google. And through other vendors, I don't know how they do stuff um, because I don't use any others. Gmail just happens to be the one I use, and so I can give some personal uh, feedback on that. Now, I mentioned foolish sites. So those are sites that, are, that block the plus. Uh, they say that they, they uh, um, think that they don't want tagging or that they, they just have bad old regular expressions. Uh, for one, uh, one of the, 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 the pieces with that is there's an old... Um, piece of webmail code that's been around for a decade plus um, and has had security problems in it for a decade plus and hasn't been fixed. It's a fairly common used uh, tool that doesn't support the plus or doesn't allow pluses in email addresses. So when, you, when I see that on a site, I wonder if they're running that tool. And if they're running that tool, how many other people are getting my account information because their website is not secure? Um, so it's an indication to me that there's just through experience that the site is possibly not secure. There's actually a pretty decent chance uh, because in some cases I've been able to actually verify that they're using this old toolkit. Uh, but the other thing is it indicates to me that they don't know what they're doing. And if they don't know what they're doing, I don't think that they're going to be, I don't have trust that they're going to be secure either. Um, it's a, it not only is it a valid character, but it's also a common character. If Gmail is using it, it's a common character. You know, they've got like 30% or 40% of the, you know, email addresses out there or whatever. They have a significant significant portion or market share. Um, so if this is a tool that they're using, it's a common character to be used. Um, so I think the sites that are blocking that are broken. And if they're trying to make money, it just seems stupid to turn away customers for something uh, basic. Um, it also, as I say, indicates that they either they aren't competent um, or they're intentionally, in, you know, Ignoring something that does, that is valid and is common. Um, as I say, some sites uh, believe that this temporarily disallows tag addresses, um, such that I'm using it for. In fact, that T-shirt site does do do that. I had uh, some back and forth with their customer service, and that's why they're blocking it. They're explicitly trying to block tag addresses because they don't want temporary email addresses. I've got 400 ways to do that without using a, a plus sign. Uh, in fact, since I own my own domain, I have probably way more than 400 ways of doing it, including I can switch to a vendor that uses something other than pluses as the tags, and they will happily allow those. Um, so they're, all they're really doing is hurting their sales. Um, so it's just foolish from them, for them from a business perspective, to be going through and blocking this. It doesn't help them at all. Now here's some examples of, of uh, uh, tag address or uh, address tagging. Um, so we've got an uh, example, as I say, some vendors use a minus instead of a plus. So example minus, and you can put a string, any string, so PayPal at example.com for your PayPal account. Um, and then example dash plug for if you join the plug mailing list, right, which I highly recommend everybody do if you haven't done. Um, what is one of the problems with using a tag like this? Don't guess your username, yeah, so you, it's easy to guess. And, and let me give some reference to the talk I was giving where I kept referencing address tagging, was talking about privacy security using a, a password manager so that you can have unique credentials for every site that you log into. And that includes a unique email address. So that if they, if they break into LinkedIn again, which has happened three times in the last uh, eight years, and get out, figure out what your, your account, your email address is, we don't want to make it easy for them to figure out what email address you're using 
elsewhere. So if you use example-linkedin at example.com, whatever your email address is, they can plug and play and try PayPal and Bank of America and whatever else for, for different banks and, and start going after your financial accounts. Or they can go after your uh, uh, social media accounts or whatever it is that they're trying to attack that particular uh, afternoon. Um, so using the company name makes it really easy for them to guess what you're using. Um, they still need to know the password, which hopefully you've got different passwords everywhere. But again, let's not make it easy for them. And I'll get to that in a second. Now, I also suggest using organizational tags um, so that you can keep track of what kind of uh, account this is. And it doesn't really matter necessarily for like your bank versus your, your utilities and so forth. Um, but I think for mailing lists, so things that you're, you're expecting a lot of traffic versus things you're only going to get some individual traffic, it's nice to have. And so that's why I gave the mailing list as the first example. Um, so uh, example plus list dash plug at example.com so that you know this is a mailing list. And now you can also, when you're filtering, you can go through and filter anything as, as the plus list as being bulk mail. It's coming from a mailing list um, so that you can separate things. Uh, and it, in, if you join a bunch of mailing lists, it's good to filter those into their own um, mailboxes so they don't jam up your inbox. Uh, I am on a lot of different mailing lists, and some of them get hundreds and hundreds of, of pieces of mail a day. So it's nice to have something where I can sort them. Or even if I have them all coming into my email, my inbox, I can label them all so they will be sorted for me afterwards automatically um, after I've gone through and, and deleted tags and so forth, or um, conversations on my inbox. Uh, and then I gave a mail order, mail order example. Uh, again, not, not necessarily quite as useful. But I still think that having a, this is a business relationship, I, you know, got a company I like, versus these are spammers or something like that, or, or one-offs or something like that, it would be nice to have. Um, especially, like I say, for one-off companies where I go and I go buy something, and I know I'm never going to go buy something again from this uh, store, or I'm not likely to do so, I could give it a one-off tag to, let me, to ease, more easily filter to junk if they continue mailing me 12 months later, which some places do including that t-shirt vendor I told that I'm not going to buy things from. All right, so in order to make it less guessable, we can add random strings. And this is actually changing something from what I was doing before in, the, uh, in my previous talks. I was recommending just doing the random string. But really, if we want to make this more usable for us so that I can look at the email address and figure out what it was for, um, we can use a combination of both. So I can use the, uh, the vendor name or something, some portion thereof so that I recognize it, along with a random string. And now I've got something that I can recognize to say, OK, this is supposed to be PayPal in the first example. But I also have this random string that, the, that somebody has to guess. So the, the, when they break into LinkedIn, they might be able to guess what, that I have email.com-paypal, um, but they're not going to be able to just automatically guess what the random string is. Um, so I'm making it doubly difficult for them, or actually more than doubly difficult, for them to figure out uh, what my email address is, which makes it more hard for them to try different passwords against it. Because now they've got to get the email address and the password in, in order to uh, try to break in. Um, and then I gave another uh, example with, for, for ThinkGeek up there. Um, the other thing I, I, pointed, or I put in this example, though, um, was if you're, whatever you're using is your separator, don't use that later on in the email address. So if, if plus is the token that you're using, for instance, a Gmail, then don't use a plus inside your tag, the rest, the rest of it. If, an un, uh, if a dash is, is part of your, um, uh, is your token, then don't use a dash later on in your tag. And avoid using a plus later on in your tag because lots of sites don't support the plus. Um, but like underscore, I think, works just fine in most places. Um, so that might be a, a good one to use as your separator. Um, and I removed this slide for brevity, uh, but also avoid Dots. Gmail does some cool things with dots. I'll, I'll post something online that has more information about that, uh, dots being periods. Um, but a lot of places don't handle periods uh, very well, and there's a couple of uh, specific rules about those. So I suggest against using periods as your separator, um, especially since in some places they actually mean things. Um, now, once you've got this unique email address, this is kind of cool that you make it difficult for people to guess what your email address is. Um, but you can also then use that for filtering. So for instance, um, I regularly, several times a, uh, a month, get email from PayPal 
uh, to my plug uh, mailing, li uh, mailing list address. Well, I didn't sign up for, for PayPal with my plug mailing list email address. So those obviously are not coming from PayPal. Or if they are, um, you know, they're, they're, they should be sending them there. They shouldn't have that email address. Um, now, if it said that they, you know, they, they know somebody who's died recently, and if I would just give them access to my bank account, they could send me millions of dollars, maybe I would be interested. But other than that, if, there's, if PayPal's sending something to my plug address or somebody claiming to be PayPal is sending it to my plug address, I don't want to see it. So I can filter, and, I can, and PayPal sends from one email address. They've said publicly that that's what they're going to do. So I can filter for mail coming from that email address, and I can then tag it and say, this is real e PayPal email. And then I can then, if you'll notice the difference between the two, aside from in the second case it's not colored because it didn't recognize as an email address, um, is that I have an, an exclamation point. And that means not... So I can say not paypal at e.paypal.com. And so if I get something to my PayPal address coming from not that email address, then I know it's not coming from PayPal. And most of the spam that I, the PayPal spam I get is that. Now I use PayPal as an example. I use LinkedIn as an example because they've been broken into and, and we, we, just, we should make fun of them. Um, PayPal, I use as an example. PayPal, I do not know of anything negative about how they've done their email or how they do things. In fact, the reason I use them as an example is because they've done some very good things with how they send out email, but they are also huge targets. There is a lot of spammers, a lot of other places that are trying to get to PayPal because that gives them access to money. And since it's all electronic, there's no physical, there's, it makes them actually a relatively interesting target for, for uh, fishers to go after. Um, but PayPal has done a very good job of, of being doing anti-phishing type of things, including sending email from one email address. So I actually use them as a good example um, because they're doing the right thing. Um, and they make it fairly easy for us. So one of the things they make it easy is we can set up this filter to say it's not coming from PayPal. Um, and that gets rid of a whole lot of spam, including things that get through Gmail spam filters and other vendors' spam filters, um, which are better than I have at my home domain. Uh, so my home domain, I get a lot more coming through because uh, my anti-spam stuff is not quite uh, up to speed with, with uh, the group of people doing stuff at Gmail since it's just me doing stuff at home. All right. Um, so here's some providers and the, the, the things that they're using. Gmail is using a plus. I've already covered that a, a couple dozen times. Yahoo uses a dash. Um, and then fastmail.fm uh, uses a plus. But the other thing they do that's nice is they use subdomains. And I don't have time really to cover subdomains, um, but it is a really cool feature. And for those of you that are wanting to have um, a little bit more control and have, have more uh, variety of, uh, you know, of, of controls that you can put in place, uh, the subdomain feature that FastMail has actually goes above and beyond any other uh, email vendors that I've seen. I haven't ever used FastMail. The only, thing I, the only reason I even know about them is because they show up in Wikipedia articles and, and uh, occasional web searches. Um, but what I can read, what they're doing, is actually pretty cool. And if I didn't run my own mail server, they're ones I would probably least heavily consider uh, because of some of the, the nice things that they've done. Um, but it is also a bit for the geek uh, culture, uh, especially those of us that are a little, shall we say, obsessive or control-oriented. Right. Wouldn't be anybody in our groups, right? <laughs> okay, and here's some resources. Uh, Wikipedia article about address tags, uh, the, the uh, RT, uh, RTF about what is valid inside of an email address, so you can see that a plus is actually valid inside an email address, um, and the Wikipedia version of that as well, which is a little bit easier to read, uh, but for those of you that are purists and want to go straight to the RFC, it's up there. Um, and then um, the Google was a security thing that came out last night that should have been in this presentation. All right. Um, so any questions? Nope. All right, then thank you very much.